Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Now the Greeks did the same thing and then the Romans did the same thing. They're the same people, the Greco Roman Empire. Let's see where democracy came from. Come on. First Matthews chapter 1, verse 7. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then. My bad, go to verse 9. Let's go to the point. Verse 9. And after his death, they all put crowns upon their heads. So did their sons after them many years. And evils were multiplied in the earth. So when the white man came into power, when they conquered the Persians and the Medes who had us in captivity, the Bible says that evils multiplied in the earth. You know. Any wickedness spread worldwide. You understand that? Now let's go to 141. Let's read about some of the evils that the Bible talks about. Read. Really. Verse Matthew chapter 1 verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom. Now what we're reading, we're reading about the history while we're under the Greek captivity. When we're under the rulership of the Greeks, that's why you read in the, in the uh, New Testament, there's neither Jew nor Greek. We became Greeks. Right. Think about it. Even in college today, our people, what? They want to be Greeks, right? Yeah. I want to join a fraternity. Jesus. I want to join a sorority. Bring I'm a Delta. They go, ski. They do all of them stupid sound here. I'm a Cuba. And they drive, they bounce around and do all kinds of manner of stepping. Where do you think they learn that from? They want, our people love to be Greeks. That's what the Bible says. Let's read on. That all should be one people, and everyone should have, everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agree according to the commandment of the king. So the Bible says that the nations they said they we all want to be one people. So the king Antiochus, one of the Greeks, he says, I want all the people to become one people under what? One nation under God, right? Indivisible, right? That's where we get our creed that they taught us in school, the Pledge of Allegiance. And we all want to be one people and be right. So all the heathen agreed according to the king, of the, of the king, of the command of the king. Verse 41, moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and everyone should leave his law. Meaning everyone should forget their customs in which the lands that they came from. That's why today you got the Arab woman, she'll wear a, a what do they call it, a burqa or what is it, a head pepper. She'll come on her head, but she'll still wear some tight ass pants because she forgot her law. The East Indian woman, they'll come with their garbs and their garments, but then what? Now you all of a sudden, they start dressing like Americans. Because they forget their customs. Same with us. He said that all the nations are going to forget their laws. Come on. So all the heathen agree. Heathen means other nations. All the other nations are greater than what? According to the commandment of the king, yea, many also of Israelites, excuse me, yea, many also of the Israelites consented. To his, to his religion. They consented to his what? To his religion. Meaning what? Democracy is a religion. The institution of the Republic of America is a religion. And we consented to it like we do today. Let's read on. Let's see what they did. And sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice. So they said, you should follow the laws of the land, meaning oh, be okay with homosexuality, be okay with breaking the Sabbath, right? Be okay with what else? We don't. And drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days. Meaning, and our feast days. Forget your feast days, celebrate our feast days. Like, at that time, he was, they was implementing Valentine's, right? That's a pagan holiday from the Greek and the Romans, Valentine's, right? The Olympics was another thing, sports. All that stuff was of their custom. They said, forget your ways and learn our ways. 
Right? Holy days. Holy days, exactly, they don't know my brother. About the Feast of right. They don't know about um, Come on. The of you don't know about the Passover? I hope you like. What else? The Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement, very good. Which was not too long ago. Right, so you've been following. All praises, we are. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Set up altars and groves. Groves is what? Churches. Now we have churches on every single corner in Newark. Bring it out, and, and it's the most violent area. Right. And have the churches changed anything in our community? Nope. Why? Because they teach in this, this the doctrine of the so-called white man Jesus. Teach your boy Jerry. And not teaching the true Christ. Do you know that Christ is a black man in model? Did you know that? According to the Bible? Let's read on. Let's see what else that the Greeks made us do. Come on. In chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts, that they should also leave their children uncircumcised. That's how, when you read in the Bible about there's neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, the northern kingdom, the last nine tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel, we became like the heathen, like the Greeks, and we left our children uncircumcised. Why? And make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation to the end. They may forget the law. So that we will forget our laws and our customs and our statutes, read. And change all the ordinances. And whosoever would not do according to the commandments of the king, he said he should die. See that? So if we, didn't, if we went against what the law of the land said, to forget all our customs, our, our, our heritage, our, 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 our everything that we stood for, and for righteousness sake, we would get put to death. What would happen to our children? Read on. Verse 57. And whatsoever was found with any of the book of the testament, or if any consented to the law, the king's commandment, was that they should be was that they should be put him to death. Right. So if we were found with our records with our Bible, the, the Greeks would put us to death. Now give me uh first Maccabees six. How you doing my brother? What's that? What's your flag, my brother? What's that? I can't see, I'm sorry. What is that? The nation of what? God of the earth. Five percent of the earth? Is that what you're saying? I'm trying to understand. I can't hear you. All right. So you 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 representing whatever that pin said, right? So so let's read on. Let's read on. Second man. Uh, second man to be six and uh, six or six. Second man to be chapter six, verse six. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So now we couldn't call ourselves Jews anymore. It was against the laws of the Greeks. You understand that? And that carried over during Roman customs. So when Christ was born, he was born in what? The Roman captivity. That's why Herod wanted to kill him when he was born. Unless you, unless you know that birthdays was never of, of the Bible. The other nations celebrated birthdays, but never us. But we're never commanded to celebrate birthdays. You never heard the disciples say, Happy birthday to you, Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Bring it out. They didn't sing that stupid ass song. Bring it out. Well, they kept the Passover. They kept the Sabbath days holy. Right. You understand that? They kept the laws of God. They taught the laws of God. Right. That's what we're commanded to do. Come out and teach. Come out and reach our people and teach our people. Right. Because we have to wake up in these last days. Right. A lot of people think, and what, what we just went over is the, 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 the continuation of democracy and the Greek and Roman uh, uh, rulership. Now today, America is that new Rome, that new Babylon. Yes, sir. Right. We're the only people that, that put that together. Right. We're the only people. Give me Matthew 18 and 11. We're the only people as a people. We don't know who we are. Yeah. Wait, once, the, once the colonizers and the, and the conquistadors and, and our enslavers named us, we forgot everything. So we took it from us. We wasn't able to read. We wasn't able to identify right. as the true Israelites. Right. And we took it from us. That's what we just read. 
because if you know who you are, you may know where you're going. Exactly. That's the power. The brother said, if you know who you are, you know your past, and you're gonna know where you're going in the future. That's why the that's why the nations study history. They study war. They study uh, conquerors of, of, of uh, nations of how they won. You know the book of the uh, art of, what is it, the art of war? Right by uh, Confucius or whatever. They study warfare. They know how to conquer people. Right, the Romans, what they did to get us out of our land, they, they stopped the, uh, the, the, the vittles, the food provisions, and, and, uh, and they blocked up our aquifers to, so that we could have food and water so that they starved us out. And when we try to come out the city of the lost, guess what? They put us to death. And they're still doing it today. Absolutely. That's why I know New Jersey, you got dirty water still. I don't care what they told you. Oh yeah, the lead, they we changed all the lead pipes. Sure they did. Sure they did. You telling me before somebody tested the water, actually, you put it down there, there's like a little reverb. Before they tested the water, you telling me it was okay for the past 70, 80 years? For them to put lead in our children's water? That was okay? Oh, all of a sudden, in, in 2019, uh, uh, oh, they found out, uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to change the water. We're going to use PVC pipes. Because the white people coming back to the north, and they want it. Exactly. So exactly. You're being, being redlined and gentrified. That's why you got the Whole Foods and Starbucks down the block. Right. And over here, they're like, well, let's make it worse for the Negroes and the Hispanics. Let's get, it, let's get the conditions worse and worse so we drive them out and we'll take yeah. over again. They want us to go up there to the mountains, but like then they're going to abandon us. Right. <laughs> they will abandon you. Give me that Actually, read that. Let's read this. Matthew chapter 18, verse 11. Bring it out. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. So Christ came to save that which is lost. Let's find out who Christ came for out of the words of Christ. Read. This is Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep. Of the house of Israel. Wait, who is Christ sent for? For the house of Israel. Whoa! I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So God the Father sent Jesus the Christ, his son, for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Whoa! That's why he says, I only came to save that which is lost. Who's lost? Whoa! We're the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's who Whoa! Christ came for, that's who Christ died for, and that's who Christ is coming back for. That's right. right. Get out. But we gotta keep it commanded. But guess what? Two thirds of our people will perish when the fire comes. When, when World War III begins, two thirds of us are gonna die. You're not gonna hear that stupid speaker play in 1995 anymore. That's gonna be dangerous. Bring it up! You understand what I'm saying? That's gonna be long gone. And it don't matter how old you are, because Moses will put you when he was over 80. Bring it up! Moses is repent when he was over 80 years old. Yeah. So you can still repent, my brother. Run. Get him up. Don't think you're too old. Yes, sir. Just to take it back up what you said. Yes, sir. About the two thirds. You said that's why it's the word. I'm not sure where exactly, but it says our people are characters for lack of knowledge. Right. Right. We have the strength for our lack of knowledge. That's the book of knowledge right there. Exactly. And have you ever gone to this and then seen the Indians like in real life? Yes. They they black, bro. That's absolutely. Uh, believe black. it or not, a lot of people in know it are Native American. Yeah. They don't even know. I'm a black foot Indian. Are you? Yeah. Our prince, he comes from the tribe of Gad. You see his, you see a biblical name right there? Gad. You see a third brother on the side? Also a point or two. That's your oh. biblical identity. You come from the tribe of Gad of the nation of Israel. That's who you are, my brother. You no longer black foot. That just means your foot was black. <laughs> That's it. That's the last name. This is the name of God. I understand there's a byword. But you're called Gad out of the nation of Israel. Right. That's the true know. name. Give me that in uh, they wouldn't Isaiah 5, 25 like 4. Because guess what? God named us. The white man renamed us. So God initially named us. You understand that? Isaiah 45 verse 4. Let's find out. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 4. For Jacob, my servant. For Jacob, my servant said, and Israel, my elect. So there's an elect chosen of Israel. God says, Jacob is my servant and Israel is my elect. You understand? We were elected out of all the nations of the earth 
God chose us as his people. Me. I have even called thee by thy name. I have so named thee, though thou hast not known me. God says, I called you by my name and I surnamed you. Meaning your last name is Israel. But you have not known it. Because you let we departed from God. Because our church has taught us this debacle of the image of Christ. You understand that? We have left Gideon Isaiah 66, 65 and 15. What happened? He decided to celebrate Christmas. Lord, he decided to celebrate Halloween, Thanksgiving, New Year's. And all those are pagan, Roman, and Greek gods. Right. Gods of Egypt. Oh. Hey. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 15. Bring it out. And you shall leave your name for a curse. The Bible says we left our name for a curse. We said we want to be like the other nations in all things. Hell, we even wanted, we even wanted someone to rule over us like the other nations when God was dealing with us directly. Bring it out! You understand that? We left our name for a curse, come on. For the Lord shall call, for the Lord shall slay thee, and call a servant by another name. He called us now by another name. Who are the servants of God, do you know? The servants of God, who are they? The Israelites, that's right. We are the Lord's servants, but we got to come back and serve Him. How do we serve God? Give me that in Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Let's find out how we serve God today. We have to come back. You so-called Hispanics and uh, Guatemalans, Mexicans, they are the chosen people of Israel. Y'all got to return back to the true God. Bring it out. You hear that, my sister? God calls you a princess, but we walk in sin, we walk in error. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? And these are requirements from the Lord. Also, he's putting me up a little bit because he's doing, he's doing pissing me off. So God says, no, the mic, yeah, turn up the mic. God says that, what, read it again. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? These are requirements of his people and his children. Read. But the fear the Lord thy God to walk in all his ways. How do we fear God? How do we fear God? How do we fear him? That's right. Can we hold that and give me Psalms 119. Get out of 111 and 10. This is how we fear God. And then give me 119 and 120. Right. We gotta learn to fear God because if we don't fear God, guess what? We're gonna fear all. Think about it. When you get pulled over, what happens? We, straight as an arrow. The hands on ten and two on the steering wheel. We afraid. We walk in our community. We afraid. We fear our children because they rule over us. They are oppressors. We fear the white man because he oppresses us today and bends us down. Read. Psalm chapter one eleven verse ten. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all they that do his commandments. So God says to understand what he's talking about, you have to start keeping his commandments. He has to start doing them. It's an action verb. Two letter word, big meaning, do. D-O. So you gotta do the commandments in order to fill God. Give me uh, 118 and 120. This is Psalm chapter 119, verse 120. My oh. flesh trembling for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. So we gotta be afraid of God's judgments. King David said, my flesh trembles at the judgment of God. You understand that? Look at the dead wildfires in California. God is revisiting the earth. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.